Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be big box store plant shopping at the Home Depot off of Custer Road in McKinney, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel, as well as following me on Instagram at Grow Folds. That's the fastest way to get in contact with me. But um, this is a Home Depot I often feature in this specific channel just because. It's really close to where I'm based at, and you can see right here, they've got these um, raised grower beds. I'm ready to go for all of these nice looking um, Bonnie plants. Bonnie plants typically sources all of these big box stores with um, vegetable plants like these. So we've got a bunch of assorted tomato plants. You can see the roots are popping out here and I've actually bought some Bonnie plants before. They're very easy to establish in planters. Now these are for $4.98. So if you don't wanna grow tomatoes um, from seed, you can always just buy a couple of bushes here. This one is for $9.98. This one is a little bit larger of a plant. Um, you can see they've got a variety of different types of tomatoes. So plant foldies. And if you are new to this channel, my name is Richie. I call my um, viewers and subscribers plant foldies. Um, you can actually start, you know, growing your vegetable plants. I know that I've been featuring a lot of different types of plants. Most of the plant um, shopping I typically do would be about indoor um, tropical plants, but now that spring has arrived, I will be featuring a lot of outdoor plants alongside with the indoor plants as well. So you can see that we've got plenty of tomato plants here. These ones are actually with tomato plant cages. I really like that a lot, especially if you're not gonna be growing these tomatoes in the ground. I remember as a child, I grew a bunch of tomatoes from seeds. My grandmother was able to show me on how to like stake them up and we had so many great tomatoes. Um, we had a lot of tomatoes, actually cherry tomatoes and just some really big tomatoes as well. And they just are the best, you know, homegrown tomatoes are the best tasting tomatoes, actually any type of vegetable plants that you would grow. And you can see right over here, the Home Depot has a ton of plants that you can pick from different types of herbs you can see this is a spearmint herb right here um, they've got garden sage they've got chives they've just got all sorts of um, plants and these are all for $4.98 now you can probably get uh, more cost effective um, vegetable plants and herb plants by going to like grocery stores they typically are a little bit more cost effective than a big box store now I will say Walmart has some pretty cost effective plants, but the best place to um, get um, herbs and vegetable starters like these would be HEB, which is a local plant. Um, actually, not a local plant. It is a local grocery store in Texas. So if you um, live in a Texas city where there is an HEB, I would check out the Texas backyard. They typically have starter plants for like a dollar twenty-seven versus the four ninety-eight you would buy at Home Depot. But needless to say. I like showing you guys different types of herbs. Now, this is one of my favorite herbs. These are the Thai basil. Most people will grow just a regular basil, but the Thai basil, I think, is a little bit more fragrant, um, and I just like the taste of it. You can add it in salads. You could add it in just a lot of um, different types of Asian cooking, and that's probably a plant I would like to grow. I mean, every time I do plant shopping videos, I always talk about, like, this is a plant that I like to grow, but plant foldies, I think you are in the same situation as me. As we look at plants together, you know, I do one hour plant shopping videos daily. So if you haven't gotten a chance yet, please subscribe because we do have a nice community. Um, typically when we do live premiered um, videos, we have a chat that usually starts at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time if I'm on schedule or it could be as late as nine o'clock or even 10 o'clock at night. So, um, you know, just a little community that we have here. And for all of my regulars, Kathy, you already know that you are one of my regulars here. I've got a ton. I, I probably need to write a list of people who are constantly on the live premiere chats. I really appreciate you guys, but you can see it is a beautiful day out in North Dallas, which is where I am based at. And you can see they've been starting to, um, sell plants um, or tomatoes in hanging baskets that doesn't really make sense because i know tomatoes have to kind of crawl up to grow a lot of the tomatoes so um that's just kind of interesting that they have them in hanging baskets now and you can see right over here home depot has a ton of um assorted succulents and cactus so we're going to just take a look at some of the ones that they have here again 
I am not very familiar with a lot of like cactus and succulent plant IDs. That's probably the least that I know, but you can see right here, these are gorgeous looking succulents. I don't know which one, what the plant ID is for this one. So if you know, please leave that in the comments below. We've got a bunch of people here that are gurus and experts with a lot of plants. So I always love learning from you guys, but you can see here, we've got some more beautiful succulents right here. I like this a lot, this particular Emerald Idol Cactus Crest. Look at that, this is for $26.98 um, by Smart Plants. Um, Smart Plants is um, a nursery that typically sources a lot of the succulents and cactus at Home Depot. And you can see right here, a quadricolor century plant, $26.98, which is also known as a variegated agave. Look at how gorgeous that plant is. Now with all of the cactus and succulents, um, they typically need a lot of light, bright light, full sun works well for them. And check this out, Indian corn cob. Look at that, that really does look like some corn. And you can see that it's got a ghostly white about it, which I absolutely love. Um, it's just making me want to grow cactus. But the thing about it is, there's so many different types of plants I wanna grow. So like obviously, most people probably even discover my channel because of the big box store plant shopping themes, but I love all sorts of plants. Like right here, this is what I was talking about, Ionia Mardi Gras. This one is for $16.98. I was actually gonna pick this up and buy this today, but I'm really trying not to put as many plants in just because I wanna make sure that number one, I have the time and um, you know the time that I can you know, take to take care of the plants is what I'm trying to say. Number two, lighting conditions, care conditions, just really knowing that I have all of that time. It is all about time. You know, I found myself about two to three weeks ago getting a little bit overwhelmed because I added so many plants into my collection that some of my plants ended up getting a couple of spider mites, um, a couple of pests. And then for me, I'm the type of plant um, parent that unfortunately shuts down. And then like I get really discouraged and I just let the plant die versus like trying to save it, trying to actually take care of it. So what am I trying to get at? Um, what I'm trying to get at is as we look at these plants and as spring um, you know, advances into summer, these plants, we have to make sure that we have the time to invest in them. It's easy to hoard a bunch of plants, but um, I've said this in multiple um, videos of mine, it is all about making sure you have the time to take care of your plants. Otherwise, you're just gonna be not a very good plant parent. And you know, these plants don't, really choose us we choose the plant so we need to make sure that we're taking care of them um, i've been looking at a lot of mandevilla plants like um, mandevilla flowers they have become readily available i haven't ever grown them and then you can see right here i thought this was, this was some type of like um you know variegated grass but this is a yucca color guard look at how gorgeous those are uh, the striping and variegation here obviously this plant will need a lot of bright um, light and i think that's a gorgeous looking plant but this is just the entrance of the outdoor section of the this home depot i will say a lot of home depots a lot of big box stores are really starting to fill up their um outdoor sections and you can see petunias i love this petunia because it has like a nice gradient color it's like a dark yellow in the center and it becomes lighter and lighter i'm um, like a sunburst i really like that a lot and i you know previously did a video where i featured a bunch of petunias at walmart i will say petunias this season seems to be like the flower of the hour i'm not sure if i'm you know correct at least in the North Dallas area, it seems like there is just a ton of petunias or maybe that's just all over the country where there's just so many petunias that are hybridized. And then you can see right over here, they've got a lot of like tropical combination planters. Like this one is a cordyline plus mandevilla flowers. Love cordyline. I love looking at that pink and red. And again, with um, cordylines, you want to grow them in lots of light. The more light you give it, the better coloration it's going to get. I wish I could grow cordyline. Apparently some people are able to grow cordyline indoors, but the problem with growing cordylines indoors is they tend to get spider mites. And I think that is pretty much the running theme of a lot of plants that are meant to grow outdoors. Um, when grown indoors, even if you are giving them the right lighting conditions, it's that spider mite. And I would just say, and um, you know, plant foldies or anybody just watching my video right now, would you say that the biggest mishap that we get as plant um, 
growers is just pest. I just wish that if pests just didn't exist, it would just be so easy to grow plants indoors specifically. And that's why for me, I like to show you guys outdoor plants as well because I've stated this before in a previous video and even during a live premiere chat, I think growing indoor plants outdoors on like a shaded patio make it, it makes it easier. I feel like the indoor plants actually grow better outdoors. Leave it in the comments or let me know what you think, plant foldies or anybody just watching my video if that's the case. At least for me, if I ever wanna grow a plant um, to a really good size, like maybe an alocasia or some type of um, cordyline, I would just let it grow outdoors and let it do its thing and then I have like a full blown plant. Um, and you can see here, I passed by a bunch of kangaroo paws. These are all succulent type plants, but look at the blooms. Look at how that yellow is just glowing. It's glowing in the sunlight. It is absolutely stunning. Now with kangaroo paws, since it is more of a succulent type plant, it does need full sun. And these ones are for $34.98. Now I would say Home Depot has some fair pricing a lot, a lot of times with their plants. Nothing's really overpriced. Honestly, you can get some good deals as well. So if you haven't already, I would say please um, subscribe to my channel just because I feature different types of big box stores. Like I will go to a big box store, a local plant nursery, a grocery store. So you can get most of the pricing and kind of compare and contrast what is a fair price, what is a expensive price, price for a plant. Um, but anyways, super excited to be able to show you a lot of these plants. And you can see that there's just so many flowering plants. It's super windy. It looked like all of those plants were about to, um, you know, blow over, but they're not. And this is a Uriopes plant. I thought this was some type of mum or chrysanthemum. This one is for $19.98. And you can see how beautiful the yellow um, flowers are and they've just got more um, shelves of just overflow of plants. Like I think that this particular Home Depot has so many plants and I find this really interesting. This looks like a Dracaena, but it's actually a Cordyline. And I really like this Cordyline. This is a Cordyline Red Star. Look at that. So when you look closely at the Cordyline, it's got more narrow leaves. It really does look like a Dracaena marginata or something of that nature, but it is a Cordyline. And what I love is that it's got a very deep um, maroon burgundy look about it. And then it's got lighter stripes in the middle of the foliage. A really nice looking plant and it's not a shiny looking Cordyline. It is actually more of a matte finish. So this is a super gorgeous looking Cordyline Red Star. It would definitely do well with like a light, um, maybe a cream or white planter, just because the, the foliage is darker. And I love dark foliage plants. You know, anything that is deep maroon, purple, even as black as can be, I love those types of plants. Here is an interesting little plant right here. This is a tree rose. So basically this rose was either grafted on a high rose tree or it was trained up to be like a tree. Um, and then here is an Asiatic lily. I've seen a lot of different types of Asiatic lilies. They've seen yellow ones. These ones are the pink ones. And these are for $14.98. I saw some that are um, super red and some that are super like um, scarlet red love the look of this um asiatic lily it is a perennial and for those that don't know what that term means perennial is basically a plant that you can grow outdoors and if it's in the correct zone um, in the country you or place in the world it will be able to come back every spring so it'll die off in the winter but then it'll come back every spring I haven't really grown a lot of perennials in my landscape. Um, my landscape is mostly Japanese maples and like things that would be more conducive to a Japanese garden because I love the minimalistic look of a Japanese garden. Although looking at all of these beautiful flowers like these marigolds for instance, look at that. I love marigolds. These are for $7.98. Now the thing about marigolds, they're easy to grow from seed and honestly you're it's more cost effective to grow them from seed and you can make them you can actually grow a lot of marigolds there's so many different varieties now but that is a typical orange one i don't mind the orange one i think it's gorgeous and the thing about marigolds is you want to give it bright light full sun and you don't want to give it too much nitrogen fertilizer otherwise it will end up growing more like leaves versus flowering 
and I did want to walk over here because this is actually gorgeous I was actually considering getting a rose tree to put in my front yard like I'm trying to figure out what I should do with my front yard because there was a couple of like bushes and shrubs that just didn't make it over the winter and um, either I will just leave it to be more of an open space or maybe fill it up with some gorgeous flowering plants not a hundred percent sure but you can see right here this is a whole tray of um, marigolds these are for $13.98 so I think that's really cool um, I will say buying flowering plants um, at Home Depot, you'll get a fair price. But if you really want an inexpensive um, bunch of flowering plants, I would recommend Walmart. I feel like Walmart right now has the most cost effective pricing for outdoor plants. So as you guys can see, Plant Foldies, I am featuring more and more outdoor um, gardening plants but that doesn't mean that i will not be featuring indoor plants i think i'm going to pepper and do a combination of both but as you can see and you walk into this home depot there are a lot of people shopping so i'm going to try hard not to get people in the the actual video but you can see there is another shelf of like tropical out, um, plants there are just ample amount of like cordyline hawaiian tea plants this one right here look at this Look at how gorgeous that pink is, that hot pink with the maroon tone. Really nice looking plant. I bought one from Walmart for like $5.24 or something of that, that price and I have yet to put it in a big planter. Um, I have been growing mine outside in full sun and it hasn't burned so I'm hoping that I can get it into a large size by the end of the summer and maybe, just maybe, I might be able to grow it over the winter. And then this is another um, quarter line. This is a quarter line red star again. Um, really nice looking one. This one is a smaller um, smaller one for $7.98. Not a bad price, but you know, quarter line, they grow fairly quickly as well. And again, if you give it a lot of light, it is going to look so gorgeous. You get the best kind of um, coloration and wow so i know that most people think that caladiums are probably basic plants but i couldn't help but look at these pink ones right here if you haven't been following my channel or have been you know that i talk about pink plants this one is for $8.98 i mean it is fairly i would say it's a little bit more expensive for a caladium because you can buy bulbs but I am thinking that I'm going to end up buying one of these pink caladiums because I love pink plants. I have been told that you can actually grow caladiums indoors. The thing about it is if I am going to grow a caladium indoors, we know that caladiums will go dormant. So you would just like um, alocasia, you would most likely need to give it a lot of light. It needs to be in warmer conditions. And for caladiums, I already know if you grow this indoors, it will be spider mite prone. So that's one of those things where you have to just stay on top of your um, pest control. I always talk about pest control in every single video I do just because for those that are new to you know growing plants indoors or just house plants in general that is probably the biggest drawback about growing plants and not really knowing that there are pests like for instance if you ever buy um, plants from a big box store and you bring it into your home just know that the soil probably has fungus gnats um, you know eggs and then all of a sudden you'll have fungus gnats in your home and then it becomes an infestation and it's just a vicious cycle so like those are things that you have to consider whenever you're buying plants and um you can see here there's just so many plants at home depot it's it's really um exciting and you can see there are some more caladiums now i don't know the specific um varieties of caladiums or at least the plant ids i know one year i grew so many caladiums and this one again is for 8.98 i bought a bunch of caladium bulbs actually from costco and it was really fun to grow them now caladium bulbs won't actually um sprout until it gets a little bit hotter so it's kind of nice that i'm able to find full um sprouted caladiums around this size in the beginning of uh, you know the end of march um, early april because spring is just starting in north dallas and you know the temperatures are still fairly cool so if you were to try to grow bulbs right now for caladiums they may not necessarily sprout just yet because they do need that heat but caladiums look gorgeous um, they, I love the, you know, the bright colors. You know, I've been getting into growing a lot of um, plants that are pretty much considered to be grown outdoors, but like 
For instance, um, coleus. So I just remember visiting my grandmother one year and she just had a bunch of starter coleus that she bought like this. And then she was able to literally multiply them into several like 10 inch planters and they were just gorgeous. So I'm gonna pull this little tray right over here. Like you can see here, look at all the coleus you can get here. And I love the pink and then the neon green on it. Now plant foldies, um, watching this video or even in the live premiere, mirror chat what do you guys think about coleus i have bought several varieties of coleus i actually spent my sunday afternoon um repotting a bunch of these starter coleus into actual planters like look at this one right here this one's for 13.98 but you get a, a full tray of these gorgeous um, coleus plants I love that neon color. And if you have been watching my plant videos, you know I love me some yellow plants, some neon plants. They kind of remind me of like that neon pothos or um, philodendron heteraceum lemon lime. Gorgeous looking plant. And this is another coleus that I would definitely grow in my collection. And then this is another plant that I've talked about in previous videos. These are wax begonia. Um, I didn't realize that begonias were actually grown for some of their flowering um, properties. And I think that's really cool. And now this is a little bit late into the season, but we've got some ornamental um, cabbage or ornamental kale. Now these do be better during the winter months or the cooler months. This one is for $8.98. I would say that this wouldn't be a plant that I would grow in North um, Texas or in Texas in general over the summer. They just wouldn't do very well because they prefer cooler conditions. And you can see here, this one is an interesting coleus right here and it's um, a six pack for i think two something two dollars and 96 cents or 98 cents i think i am going to buy one of these today because that is a really good price for all of the coleus plants i think i'm going to plant it in like a six inch planter or an eight inch planter but that's that's a coleus i'm definitely going to buy today um so that's the thing you know i talk about like having restraint from buying plants but if there is a particular plant that i really want to buy i just end up buying it and you can see right here we've got um these gorgeous purple shrubs. I used to have them in my front yard when I first bought my um, home back in 2019, but we had a really bad um, freeze, ice storm, whatever you want to call it in Texas, where literally all of like um, Texas lost its power. Luckily my home didn't because I'm right next to a fire station. So whenever it comes to like bad weather, um, we're kind of prioritized. So that's, you know, a, a plus when you're like next to either like a hospital or a fire station but anyways let me not rant and let me just talk about plants you can see that there's just so many plants here like look at this right here so they've got a bunch of um lemon mayor improved trees so this one actually doesn't have the thorns now with lemon trees you really need to give them a lot of bright direct light full sun for them to really bloom and actually grow well. Um, I haven't tried to grow a lemon tree in the ground in North Dallas. I do have a variegated lemon tree, pink lemon tree that I've had for about two and a half years, maybe three years. It's been growing in a planter. It and right here we are looking at some gorgeous um, gardenias. This one is a diamond sphere. And right over here, we've got a sunshine ligustrium. Really like that um, shrub. It's so bright and yellow. I've tried to grow that actually out in my um, landscape, but for some reason it just didn't take. Maybe it was just too hot for Texas. And that's the thing. Um, we're looking at a bunch of different types of um, encore azaleas. And just they, this place right here, this Home Depot is just full of plants. Like I am all about these Encore Azaleas. Look at that. This is the Starburst. Look at how gorgeous that is. It hasn't started to bloom, but just like that one bloom right there. And Encore Azaleas are just um, gorgeous looking Azaleas. They rebloom three times a year. And then this is another beautiful um, shrub that I would love to grow in my my outdoor landscape just because of that yellow variegation and then we've got a bunch of ligustrium sunshines again i think that this um, particular shrub you know it says it can take full sun but it probably needs um more shade when it's grown in like at least north dallas our summers are brutal and you can see we've got a lot of um, different types of juniper and cypress trees right here 
Um, these would be nice to go put in a Japanese garden and you can see we've just got a lot of different types of shrubs Here is another rose um, tree. This one is a yellow one right there. Look at that. You think of like yellow rose of Texas um, These ones are for th I think close to $39.99 or something of that nature and so I am debating on whether I should get a rose tree now there's just so many plants here and you can see right over here there's just a sea of azaleas and even in the background look at all of these plants I'm surprised I haven't caught anybody in the actual um, video because there were a lot of people shopping for their landscapes um, lots of people getting their yards and their backyards ready I love outdoor gardening as well and that's the reason why look at this i might need to buy this actual um rose tree this yellow this canary yellow is absolutely gorgeous now with roses the one thing i will say about roses is that they need to have um, warmer weather um, they need to stay dry so you don't want to water your roses um, and get their leaves wet you want to water from the bottom and make sure that you're not hosing them from the top and you can see here they've got hundreds literally hundreds of knockout roses and then that's that yellow um rose of texas again right over there and you can just see we've got some true bloom roses knockout roses now these particular roses are a little bit more disease um resistant just because they've been hybridized and you can even see that um it is just blooming and you can see right here this is a cypress hinoki um tree i am actually interested in getting one of these um trees just because it's already like manicured to where they kind of look like some bonsai trees or japanese maples um with japanese maples that would just make it such a good little addition to a japanese garden and this is actually a fairly large specimen already i think it was like 197 dollars i might consider getting this but you know it's one of those things where you want to get these types of trees into the ground at least if you live in north dallas because if you try to plant them as summer comes around the roots don't have enough time to really establish and then the tree you know the plant or the shrub tree or whatever gets a little stressed because again we deal with a hundred plus degree weather in texas i know that some of you plant foldies are still talking about getting um snow I will say in Texas, give it another three weeks and then we're gonna start feeling that summer heat. Here is a gorgeous lace leaf Japanese maple. I love the delicate lace leaves. Um, the thing about lace leaf maples for me, um, they haven't done well because I feel like I just don't have enough shade in my backyard to be able to grow them successfully. And you can see here, this one is another um, tree that has some nice um, red foliage really like that a lot i actually like red and maroon type um, foliage on trees and you can see right over here they've got some manicured type shrubs that's really cool and just more bushes and shrubs that you can put in your landscape um, it is a little it's still fairly early in the season to be able to just redo your landscape in the outdoors now i will say to my plant foldy viewer alice Thank you so much for sharing a bunch of your flowers and just garden in um, Instagram. You sent me a bunch of photos and Alice's garden, if you guys haven't seen it already, oh my gosh, you talk about expert gardener. Alice, I commend you. I wish I was as good as you with growing all of those plants. And you can see right here, this is a jasmine made of um, or what is it just is a jasmine yeah this is a jasmine plant sorry this is one of those arabian jasmine plants now in the philippines which is where i am originally from my family's from they call that sampaguita and that is the natural flower of the philippines just more factoids you know me being a proud filipino i like to actually share some cultural things especially when it comes to plants we um you know it's a tropical country so a lot of these indoor plants that i see and talk about are very much endemic to the philippines and you can even see right over here these are a lot of these um hibiscus um flowers and we call those um gomamela in the philippines i like this one a lot this is the rico suave 
um, hibiscus. I love that yellow um, bloom. I saw a bunch of these actually at a local grocery called Kroger. They were actually a little bit um, cheaper than the ones at um, Home Depot. I think these ones are for $25, somewhere around there. And then we've got a bunch of tropical shrubs or tropical plants for the landscape. So this one is a Croton Petra. This one is a fairly large one. These ones are for like $19.98 or somewhere around there. And then these are for $10.98. These are a little bit um, smaller, but you can grow Croton Petras outdoors. Honestly, if you grow croton, any type of croton outdoors in full sun, they will give you the best light. Um, they just require a lot of light. Now with crotons, and I've already experienced this, they are finicky plants. You don't want to overwater them. And if you don't give them the right lighting conditions, they will drop all of their leaves and it takes a while for them to like recover and grow their leaves back. Now, this is one of the plants I am in love with, like literally in love with. This is a Coeur d'Alene um, Hawaiian tea plant. Now, this one is um, a different type of variety. I don't know specifically what it is, but what I do know is for the, the Home Depot, if they sell just the actual Coeur d'Alene plant this size, I would buy it just because look at the, the leaves. They're just so stunning. And you can see they've got Mandevilla flowers here. Now, this one is for $99 dollars so you know it's a combination planter with some tropical plants but you know with the hawaiian tea plant or cordon lime plant um the more light you give it again the better it's going to give you um better coloration and you can see right here we've got a bunch of japanese boxwood you know japanese boxwood you can actually use that to make hedges and then right over here we've got some more tropical plants I like this a lot. Look at the blooms on this. They're very tiny. They kind of remind me of Hoya blooms almost. And that's the thing. I know that these outdoor plants, I don't know if you are familiar with them, but I like to expose people to different types of plants. And that's why as of late, I have been um, fixated on showing you a lot more outdoor plants. This one is for $29.98. This is a Topiary topi Eugenia. Um, I like that a lot. I like that it's like a ball. Um, that would be something that I might add into my front yard because I have this like Japanese garden zen look about it. I have a bunch of rocks and some stones and things like that. So who knows? I, I, um, I might be late into the season. I really wish that I would have planted a bunch of these shrubs maybe about a, a month ago, maybe like late February. But the thing about it is at least in North Dallas, and that's, um, you know, you got to really gauge your, your weather. Sometimes we still get hard freezes. Um, I mean, it's fairly cool today, very windy as I'm showing you guys these um, outdoor plants. And gosh, there's just so many Rio um, plants right over here. Look at all of these plants. And obviously, you can't miss a Boston fern. For some reason, Boston ferns are the it plant because it's everywhere. And you can see right here, look at these cactus. So I have been trying very hard to go show you guys more cactus. This one is for um, $39.98. But look at the cactus right here. Look at the nuances of the spikes and even just the color. And this one is a really cool looking cactus as well. I mean, they look very prickly. So I haven't really ever grown cactus. What I do know about cactus is full sun. Make sure that you don't overwater it. Otherwise, it'll die. But cactus in general, they're, they're interesting. I would be looking for some more variegated cactus. And you can see right over here, they've got a bunch of um, succulent arrangements. Um, by Smart Plan. And now these ones are for $19.98. So you can hang it or you can just let it sit on that plant stand. And you can see right here we've got more cactus, agave plants, um, really nice looking cactus actually. They're fairly large. I just wish that a lot of these cactus we could grow um, in our landscapes like you would in say California but I would think that growing something like this like this fuzzy one right here I don't know if it would actually survive a frost this one is a prickly pear fuzzy look at that it, it does look fuzzy so that's kind of cute and you know that's the thing about plants you know we there is a plant for everybody you know if you're into cactus and succulents that's awesome I would really like to learn now this one is a rainbow um elephant bush right here um, for $12.98. I often see this actually at Home Depot. It's always in a hanging basket, so I'm not sure if it's just meant to like trail, but I do like the variegation. And you can see we've got some more cactus here. We've got some um, 
aloe vera plants and tons and tons of um, Boston fern. And you can see there are just more plants right over here. So this is a full house in terms of this Home Depot. And I'm loving that they have more plants. I am excited to see when they'll get some more tropical indoor plants. But let me show you this right here. So this is for $10.98. Now these are chick and hen um, succulents but this one is the spider web one look at that it literally looks like there are spider webs on this particular um, plant and this one is easy to propagate and it is it does say that it is cold hardy so that might be something I could possibly grow in a container and you can see we've got even more succulents right over here I may need to just take the time to actually learn about succulents. You know, I keep talking about um, getting more familiar with succulents, but it's really just looking at plant IDs and maybe just like doing more research. I want to pull this out though. Look at how ghostly white this is. And this one right here is, um, I don't, I, I don't know what the price is, but look at how cool that is. This is another cold hardy um, cactus. So I think that's cool. And you can see, Look at how perfect the cactus uh, spirals are. I love that. And then we've got another um, chick and hen succulent. This one is a ruby red, um, ruby heart, sorry, ruby heart. Look at that. It's got a little bit more um, burgundy type color variegation. And again, these are easy to propagate because they just literally start to multiply. The chicks are the ones that you can just cut and put on top of soil, mist it, and it's going to root. And you can see here, I'm going to pan over some more, more plants, more uh, ferns, more ground cover. And then this one, I'm not going to trick you into saying hedra. It's not a hedra helix. It's actually an Algerian ivy for $5.98. So I'm not sure if Algerian ivy are the kind of like the same as hedra helix or English ivy. Just because English ivy, we talk about this every single video, right? They um, are just more spider mite prone. Um, as we walk by, we've got a bunch of ornamental grass here. I, I don't really know a lot about ornamental grass. I don't really grow them in my, um, my space or my landscape, so I can't really talk about um, ornamental grass. Here are some nice looking impatiens. I do like white flowerings, you know, white flowers or white blooms. I find that they're very classic and they just fit in any space. Now, this is amazing. Look at this look at this gorgeous succulent arrangement like this is literally instant succulent arrangement succulent garden and you know for anybody um, that lives out in north dallas 109 dollars for this by smart plants that is super cool i mean this would be a perfect um patio um you know setup patio planter for full sun like look at this this is absolutely stunning love it there's just so many um succulents and euphorbia right over here this one is for 74 dollars. that's not bad at all either look at all of those um arrangements so you don't actually have to buy a bunch of different types of succulents it's already ready for you now this is an adorable looking succulent collection $44.98 for this truck full of succulents right here. It looks like they've got some calanchoe and some other succulents. Um, nice looking one. I do like the arrangement and I think it's really cute. Smart plants. What a nice um, setup they have here. I am a huge fan of all of the succulent arrangements. And you can see here, I'm going to pan over. So this could be either the main event for some people because I know you guys want to see some of these outdoor tropical, not outdoor, but indoor tropical plants. So we're going to just take a look at what plants they have available at this Home Depot. So the first one up, we're going to look at from by Vigoro. This is a Dracaena stowed, stowed, stowed seal or something like that. Steed sole, sorry. Steed sole. Um, what I like about this Dracaena is it's definitely um, highly variegated, but the bottom leaves typically are a little bit darker. And as it grows up, the, um, it's lighter. And you can see here we have a um, palm and this one is overwatered. So you already know whenever I'm at a big box store, I just like to like dump out the water so that the roots won't rot. That one's for $14.98. A lot of those Vigoro um, plants are going to be for $14.98. Now, this one is a Proven Winners Ficus. This is a Ficus Benjamina. This is um, Klingon Anastasia. 
This one is for $29.98. I like that green on green variegation. Um, I thought about getting a ficus benjamina, but I already realized that with ficus benjamina, ficus plants are just really finicky in general, and I don't have the um, quite enough light for it to really grow successfully. I did end up buying this gorgeous looking ficus umbellata a little while back and the one I have is doing very well. You know, I was a little bit nervous about getting a ficus umbellata because number one, it's a ficus plant so it needs a lot of bright light and then number two, it is a spider magnet, I mean spider mite magnet but surprisingly it has not gotten that and it's been doing very well for me. And then right over here is another gorgeous um, highly variegated um, ficus benjamina, look at that love that white variegation that cream variegation on this and the leaves are just really precious now you can grow this into a full-blown indoor tree if you give it a lot the correct lighting conditions it can really thrive well for you the thing about ficus benjamina plants is once you get it in the in a, your your place your home you need to find a, a, a permanent spot because ficus benjamina will drop its leaves if you continue to move it around they like consistency and then this one is another proven winner's plant right here this one is a philodendron burke in. You can see this philodendron birkin. It's got some fairly decent variegation, although I will say that a lot of the philodendron birkin I've been running into have been a little bit more highly variegated, as in like the leaves are almost white. Now, this is by Proven Winners for $29.98. Not a bad price at all. I will say that, you know, the philodendron birkin I have, I ended up buying a hydroponic one where basically it was in water, in like a water and bowl. I like that a lot. And then this one right here is a a Setosa Gray Star or a Nanthi Setosa Gray Star. This is another prayer type plant that I want to get eventually. I talk about that, you know, wanting to get. I just haven't pulled the plug to actually get it. I think it's because I don't want to spend $29.98 for it. I just wish it was a little bit cheaper. But what I like about this plant is um, the undersides of the leaves are purple lavender. Beautiful looking plant. Um, it it's just a nice like almost gray ghostly look about it and then also the veins like the delicate looking veins are really nice i would grow the hydroponically and then remember how i found um this alocasia cuculata um at another home depot this is just a green form the actual form so i definitely can confirm that i found a sport variegated alocasia cuculata and i ended up buying two of them for 29.98 i know it's a little bit pricey but if you find a sport variegated um alocasia you know you would buy it too or at least i did and i, I don't regret it but the green form isn't bad, but wait till you see, or if you haven't seen the plant find I found at the other Home Depot, you might want to check out my video where I found this type of alocasia, but a variegated one at a big box store. So super cool. And that's the reason why, um, you know, I see other plant YouTubers end up finding sport variegated um, plants. And I, you know, I am pretty much in a Home Depot, a Lowe's, a Walmart, some type of grocery store or some type of local plant nursery daily just because I am always filming. So I um, figured that the odds of me finding a sport variegated plant is likely and I was able to find one. And in here you are looking at a gorgeous Ficus Elastica Taniki probably the most showy looking ficus elastica or rubber tree plant now with ficus elastica taniki you definitely need to give it a lot of light um, i've been able to successfully grow this outdoors in full sun and it actually did very well for me they like warmer weather they love a lot of light um, there's just different types of varieties of ficus elastica but the taniki one is one that is classic it's got green, um, you know, different types of like cream variegation, white variegation, and it just looks like somebody painted the leaves with like watercolor. It definitely looks like a work of art. And what's cool about it is you can actually train it to become like a full blown tree. And it's a fairly easy plant, you know, if you can grow these outdoors, they do even better. If you grow them indoors, they're not as finicky as other ficus plants. They won't necessarily drop their leaves, or at least in my opinion, they haven't. And, you know, that's another 
tree I want to grow and then this one is another ficus elastica benjamina you can see the variegation is nice this is another proven winners one this one's for $29.98 at one point I was wanting to buy a ficus benjamina but then I realized that ficus benjamina might just be a little bit too much work just to try to get them that you know the right lighting conditions and then right over here by plant foldies we've got a philodendron florida green for $29.98 i am actually happy that i was able to find one of these months back because philodendron florida green even though it's just a green version um, is a gorgeous plant now with this plant this plant needs a, some type of support some type of moss pole because as it grows up a pole the leaves get larger and more mature and you can see right here this is the alocasia cuculata really nice looking one and then we've got a nanthi satosa gray star nice looking um, plant and this one is really healthy it looks like they just got these um, plants unloaded or restocked so that's really nice and you can see right here this is for $14.98 um, this is an overwatered dracaena stead soul and um, I was able to get this plant ID when I went to The Great Outdoors, which is one of um, Austin, Texas's premier um, nurseries, plant nurseries. If you haven't already, please check out um, that video. I traveled to Austin and I was able to do a part one and two, and you can see that plant nursery. And over here, you know that this is a, a Grow Folds video because I will show you an Aglonema Sil um, Silver Bay, typical Aglonema but it's one that is easy to grow and again if you don't have an aglonema in your um, houseplant collection please get one they're so easy to grow and they're gorgeous they are my favorite plant and i probably should get this um this dracaena stead sol and this dracaena marginata right here look at this one with the dracaena marginata it can get tall it can get up to like four to five feet tall or even taller and i just think that's really awesome but if you pan out here, look at all of the tropical indoor plants that they have available. And here we are looking at an Epipremnum Arium Jade Pothos for $14.98 by Vigoro. Um, an easy plant, one of the easiest plants you can take care of and one I would recommend for anybody starting their houseplant journey. Now check this out by Proven Winners. This is a Living Glaze Parvati. This is some type of fern for $19.98. Look at that, that looks really nice. And you know, that's the shape of the, the leaves on this fern actually kind of interests me to where I might even want to add that to my collection. And then this is another Calathea right over here. This one's got a little bit of leaf damage. This one is for $8.98 by um, Nature's Way. You know, Nature's Way is another um, plant um, sourcer for Home Depot specifically. And you can see here is an Alocasia poly. And then this Aglonema Red Siam. Look at this. So you can see that it's about to bloom. The thing about um, blooms on Aglonemas, you want to cut those um, as soon as possible because blooms on Aglonema stun its growth. There's more energy placed into the bloom versus growing um, the actual foliage. And you can see right here, Hedra Helix. This Hedra Helix or Hedera Helix is an English ivy. $8.98 and it is in one that's just a typical green one that we see and then this one right here is a proven winner's photonia this is their photonia um, I forgot what that plant ID is because they don't have it listed but it's a definitely a different photonia this one is a peperomia obtusifolia for $5.98 this one is a, um, the marble one look at that variegation really interesting looking variegation and it's a good starter plant i would say proven winners has some pretty good starter plants here and you can see they've got um a hoya now i don't know what this hoya is but this is for 598 and this one looks to be sun stress now for those that don't know what the term sun stress means it means that the plant was like pretty much exposed to a lot of light and it just gets a different coloration here is a beautiful looking um oyster plant on this i love pink plants and um this one is way more pink this one's called pink lighting 
um, and it's for $5.98. Although the leaves are a little bit damaged, that's unfortunate. And then you can see right here, we're gonna pan over again at that Aglaonema red cyan. So plant foldies, let me know what you think so far of all the plants. Do you prefer seeing the outdoor plants or more so those indoor tropical plants? I am gonna walk over here and show you this um, cordyline plant here. There's a lot of pink on this particular cordyline plant. And then the um, it's not bad at all. It's for $16.98. That's not a bad price for that plant. This one seems to have more narrow leaves. And you can see right over here, we've got some peace lilies. We've got some ficus larata or fiddle fig leaf right over here. These are huge as well. And we've got a huge spathophyllum or peace lily right here. This one is in bloom. And you can see that it's got a large bloom for sure. And then we're just gonna walk back over here and see what other plants that they have. They've got a lot of large foliage plants. So that's really cool. And this one is an Aglonema Silver Bay. I might actually break down and buy a large form of an Aglonema Silver Bay because the only drawback about growing Aglonema is that they're very slow growers. And I want something with a little bit more instant gratification. I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. It's got a silvery tone about it. And you know, Aglonema Silver Bay, it can tolerate lower light conditions and you don't really want to overwater it either. Like, Aglonema are better underwater and that's the thing I am an underwaterer I don't typically water my plants when I was younger I would always water my plants so I was an overwaterer um, now for overwatering this one's for $21.98 um, peace lilies or spathophyllum love water they actually get dramatic and like droop if you don't water them and you can see here, we've got some large Monstera Deliciosas. You know, I've been looking at a lot of Monstera Deliciosas and I didn't realize that I don't really have a large form in my collection. Look at that right there. It's starting to fenestrate. And I'm just gonna walk at the back part here and just kind of look at these other plants. We've got some more Dracaena Marginatas. Um, so if you want a large foliage plant, this one is for only $44.98. Not a bad price at all. And then they've also got the Cordyline plants right over here. I actually might buy this quarter line plant for $44.98 just because this is the one I want to get. Look at those beautiful like pink red leaves like that is stunning and it is a large plant. $44.98 is not a bad price for that large plant and you can see they've got majesty palms here. I haven't talked about majesty palms in a while but don't worry majesty palms will always be found at a big box store. They're found everywhere. And you can see right here, I'm gonna walk over here and show you this really sad looking aglonema. I don't even know where it came from, but that aglonema is really looking sad. And you can see right here, these are some oak leaf um, hydrangeas for $25.98. Um, I like the look of the oak leaf um, hydrangea and the leaves are like really fuzzy as well. So that's really cool. The thing about hydrangeas is I haven't had uh, the best look with hydrangeas. I do think that the the blooms are amazing. And right now these are for $24.98 each. And these are in planters. You know, I had a plant foldy viewer subscriber that mentioned that if I can't grow them in my landscape, perhaps growing them in um, planters. But the problem with growing hydrangeas in planters, at least for me in North Dallas, is when it gets to summertime, it's just too hot. And, you know, hydrangeas definitely do not want to like be um super dry. And I, I mean, they, they don't really have the best tolerance when it comes to hot weather. So, I'm just gonna have to figure that out. Like um, hydrangeas are a plant that I would love to be able to grow in my landscape. Um, I found some variegated hydrangeas out at Tillery um, Street Co., which is a local uh, nursery in Austin, Texas that I regret not buying the variegated version just because it really had some very nice, very, you know, variegation on it. But you can see all of these hydrangeas are nice and the thing about hydrangeas is they thrive in acidic soil so as always make sure that you are ma uh, making your soil acidic one way to do it and i say this in every video that i talk about acidity is to use coffee grinds 
uh, or use coffee grounds and just sprinkling it into the soil. Now I do want to show you some Acer palmatum or some Japanese maples right over here. Now I think this is super cool. So this is an Acer palmatum um, red dragon. I haven't seen red dragons in a while. So it's a lace leaf maple, but the, um, the lace leaf isn't as like fragile. It's actually fairly large. And you can see this one is grafted pretty high. Um, it is a cascading type um, Japanese maple. And for 109, I considered getting it. The thing about it is it's already, um, you know, already leafed out. And whenever you want to grow Japanese maples, you can, the best time to grow them or plant them in the ground is when they haven't fully like unfurled their leaves. But you can see here, they've got a, an assortment of Japanese maples. I just like the fact that they have their red dragon Japanese maple. That one I haven't seen in a long time. And I was actually, I used to have one, but I ended up killing it just because again, I just didn't give it enough shade. So that's the thing about plants. You know, some plants thrive in, you know, when it says that it needs partial shade, it does. Um, just like these Japanese maples, they, they need a little bit more shade. This one is for 129. This is a Sangukaku or a coral bark maple. And you can see right over here, they've got a bunch of red dragons here. What do you guys think about the lace leaf Japanese maple, this red dragon here? And this is only for 109. Um, that's not bad at all. And I love the fact that you can buy Japanese maples at a big box store. Whenever you think about Japanese maple, you think about like very specific specialty nurseries. And I will be traveling to Fort Worth, Texas this coming Tuesday so I can visit Metro Maples. It is one of my favorite plant nurseries of all time just because it specializes in maples. Japanese maples, ginkgos, rare satsuki azalea. I can't wait to feature that for you guys. So stay tuned for that. But you can see right here, we've got some more red dragon Japanese maples, $109. And you can see right here, they've got a bunch of red Japanese maples. I believe this is a blood good Japanese maple. And the thing about blood good Japanese maple, some people will say it's a basic um, red Japanese maple, but you know, it's one of the more hardy ones and it can get really large. It can get up to 25 to 30 feet. Now, Japanese maples take forever to grow. They are a very slow growing tree, but you know, they definitely, definitely age very well they look better as they get older and then i'm just gonna walk over here and just show you a couple more like flowering plants there's just so many plants outdoors it's so exciting like right here we've got some more kalia lilies right here and i like kalia lilies because look at how cute that purple bloom is but also the leaves have some speckling um, what else do we have here? We've got some more Vigoro plants. So Vigoro typically um, sources to, uh, to Home Depot. And you can see these are some fuchsia plants right here. Um, I really like the, the blooms of a fuchsia plant. And then what else do we have here? Some more marigolds. Gotta love some marigolds. And we've got a bunch of coral bell plants. Love that dark foliage. Absolutely stunning. And what else do we have here? More geraniums. It seems like geraniums are also in the co um, competition with petunias because if you're not looking at a petunia, you're looking at a geranium whenever you're, you're going to like a big box store. Nice color right here. This hot pink is gorgeous. And then we also have the red crimson um, blooms of that geranium. But when you pan over, there's just tons and tons of plants. I'm loving it and it's just, exciting to just show you guys these plants again plant foldies let me know what you guys think actually let me know what part of the country you're at and what kind of plants you're already seeing in your big box store and then right over here we've got more marigolds these ones are the yellow marigolds i actually prefer the orange marigolds versus the yellow ones they just remind me of marigolds you know when you think of marigold you think of orange and look at this I have already gotten a Persian shield plant and it is doing very well for me in my patio. This is a probably one of the most purple plants I've ever seen. And you can see that it's got a shine about it. It looks metallic. And these are the small um, proven winter ones for $5.98. And then we've got some lantana here. Now, here's the thing about lantana. They are um, bloomers and they can tolerate, you know, drought. So these are really good perennials to put in a Texas landscape. And they've got a couple right here in six, um, six, 
these six inch potted, potted up plants as well. And you can see here, they've got a six pack of petunias, lots and lots of petunias. I will say the better homes and garden petunias though were the best. And you can see we've got a bunch of potato vines right over here. Potato vines are very easy to grow. And actually if you grow them out in the landscape, it, um, be prepared for them to take over because these are very vigorous growers. I've heard that you can grow them indoors, but whenever I've tried to grow potato vines indoors, I just end up getting a bunch of spider mites. So that is a no-go for me. I just can't get over how gorgeous this um, quarter lime plant is, this Hawaiian tea plant. Look at that. I, I want this particular plant. Like if I could just take that home today, that would just make me so happy. And we're just gonna keep walking over here so you can see that the outdoor plants are in full force. And this is a proven winner's Hedra Helix. This Hedera Helix is um, by Proven Winners right here. And this is the Glacier um, English Ivy. I do like it a lot. And look at that, the roots are really, I'm starting to come out of the, the end of the pot. This one is for $6.98. Um, look at that variegation on it. And you can see that it's very healthy. I would think that this would make really good ground cover. Um, I'm always baffled that these plants were supposedly, um, you would be able to grow these indoors. My Hedera Helix though, number 13 and 14, because I've killed 12 of them in my past, you know, growing experiences, have been doing okay. Um, they haven't gotten spider mites. Um, the thing about growing Hedera Helix or English Ivy indoors, as I've said it before, is you need to make sure that you're checking for pest spider mites. It's literally very spider mite prone. I spray mine at least once a week with neem oil and make sure that it's next to a humidifier. And that's probably the reason why it's been doing very well for me. And you can see right over here, we've got another Corabelle's plant. This one's for $8.98 by Proven Winners. I do like the look of that um, plant. It's got a matte finish about it. And then we've just got more plants right over here. Now, what's really cool is I like these um, quarter line plants with the petunias in the bottom. Um, it's a nice combination. So it's like an instant patio um, planter. This one's only for 119. And honestly, that is not bad considering they've got some very established petunias and who could deny how gorgeous that quarter line plant looks here. And you can just see rows and rows of plants. Now this is really interesting. I haven't really paid attention to Dahlia, but look at this Dahlia plant right over here. It's just a dark foliage plant and then the bloom is nice. This one is a Dahlia hybrid. This one's for $9.98 by Vigoro. And the thing about Dahlias are they are perennials. They actually grow from bulbs. And that is another plant that I would think about growing into a planter. But again, you know, it's easy to think about growing into planters. You know, my main type of outdoor plant I'm wanting to collect and grow would be coleus and this tea plant. Like I just can't get over that Hawaiian tea plant. And I just want to just pan over here and just show you how many plants they have at this Home Depot. dark foliage plant that the plant ID I can't really pronounce so I'm just gonna flash it on the screen but you can see this is another plant that I'm curious if you can grow indoors um, I have been into the dark foliage plants plant foldies let me know if you like those purple or dark foliage plants I'm all about it I'm also all about this bougainvillea right over here now this bougainvillea it's just starting to bloom I do like the um, the color, this is an amethyst purple. And what I like about it is it's only $22.98, that's not bad, but this one doesn't have thorns. So a lot of bougainvillea actually have thorns. This one has been hybridized to where it doesn't have thorns and I am loving it. Um, it's kind of like the roses of past time where, you know, heritage roses really have a lot of thorns, but now there are some rose bushes that don't have, you know, nearly as many thorns or are thornless. So that's just really interesting. Um, 
And then right here, we've got some more fuchsia plants for not a bad price at all. I think it's $8.98. And you can see that these are just about to start to open up their blooms. Nice looking blooms as well. I do like the um, what the blooms look like. And then you can see right over here, this is an Alternanthera. I guess that's how you pronounce it, $9.98. I remember seeing that this plant was actually offered as an exotic angel's Costa Farm starter plant. So I'm assuming that this plant can be grown indoors. I would definitely add it to my collection, but this one looks like it's got a little bit, a little bit of leaf burn. Maybe it was in direct sun or it got too much sun to where it did get a little bit bleached. So, you know, that's the thing about plants. I am really curious to see if some of these house plants can, or these outdoor plants can be grown indoors. I definitely wouldn't attempt to grow a geranium indoors, but apparently a plant foldy mentioned that they were able to, um, you know, put them inside during the winter and they still grew. And then you can see right here for $9.98, more petunias. This one has some, a candy, candy cane look about it, that red and white pinwheel look i do think it's precious and i'm gonna pan over here there's just a couple more plants i wanted to show you before i ended this video and one of them is this for 9.98 this is another dahlia love this dahlia right here and you can see that the price isn't bad but look at how gorgeous that is look at that pink flower with just a little bit of peach in the middle of it um i you know saw a couple of dahlias at walmart and then this home depot has at least two different types of dahlias so um plant foldies let me know if you grow dahlias i know that they're from the bulbs so i don't know how easy it would be to start them from bulbs but what i do know again is it's got a gorgeous looking bloom like look at that absolutely stunning i can't get over it they kind of remind me of zinnias and zinnias again are an easy flowering plant that you can grow from seeds i actually have a ton of seeds that i need to just throw out in my yard and see if it'll actually just sprout and you can see we got some more hostas right here this one has got the green on green variegation for 9.98 I wish I could grow hostas indoors, but apparently they, they really just need to be outdoors. So we're just gonna keep them outdoors. And in here, we've got some yellow um, Kalia lilies and just more flowers. feature this but these are some gorgeous looking um encore azalea bonfires these are more of a compact growing azaleas i need to grow that in my collection and i did want to pan over again and show you these um caladiums i will attempt to grow caladiums indoors i would just think that their care tips would be similar to alocasia so we'll see i am gonna buy that pink um caladium that i saw earlier and i'm just gonna repot it but we let's see what else we got here so we're just going to look at these pink caladiums again i am, am a sucker for pink plants so like obviously it was natural for me to just pick up this plant and be like yep i am going to buy it i was able to grow caladiums a couple years back from bulbs i had so many caladiums i would say i had probably like 50 caladiums growing in my back patio just because i went overboard with the plants and that's the problem with me or maybe a good thing, but I do um, fixate and you know obsess about plants. I don't know if you're in the same boat as me where you just can't live without plants. Um, I have to just watch my spending and you can see that it's got some good root systems, but I am gonna buy this Caladium. I don't think it's a bad price at all. Now, um, you would probably go cheaper if you ended up just growing Caladiums from bulbs, but I wanna get ahead of the season because it's not really guaranteed whether a Caladium would not um, go dormant in the winter, even if you do provide it with a lot of like bright light or even under a grow light. That's exactly what I would do though, is if I were to like overwinter them, is to grow them under grow light put them next to a humidifier and make sure that I'm, um, I'm fertilizing them to keep them active. But this is a lot, you know, there are a lot of plants at this Home Depot. And I just keep going back to this because look at how gorgeous the pink leaves are. And I want to end this video just to show you that Cypress Tenoki plant here. This is one that I would want to add to my collection. But anyways, plant foldies, 
If you haven't already, please hit the like button for my channel. It really helps with the engagement and also leave comments after you watch the video. I respond to everybody. This is Richie at Growfold. And I definitely want to go show you some more videos all throughout this week. Um, if you guys, this is Holy Week. Um, Easter is just around the corner. And as always, please make sure you guys are subscribing to my channel, hitting that like button. And um, I will definitely see you on the next video. This is Richie at Growfolds. See you next time. Bye.